let me know. Okay, and can you make it so that, ah, uh, there you go. The presenter's view, see how good we're getting at, at Zoom and uh, these days. So what are we wanting to do today? We were very excited to have you here because this is a very important meeting. We're really looking at what the district needs, what do your clubs need? We're moving into the new year. We've all got that September spirit where new things are starting and we're wanting to make sure that all of the club presidents and all of the um, chairs of committees get a chance to know what it is we're, we're doing this year, what you're doing and have some effective um, leadership rem reminders. So our goals for today very quickly are looking at, um, actually, can you go back there? Thank you. On learning how to be effective with delegation, that we don't individually have to do it all. Being a president, being a chair, um, being a governor means you can delegate. And how do you delegate? And we're going to talk more about that as we go on. And also, um, what you, I want you to hear what is our, the district board has been working hard this year, and we want to make sure that we're making your job easier. And so we've got some ideas on that and looking at what are the um, ways to do that. Um, so we're going to go through that. We're going to look at what are the president's responsibilities, what's the committee chair delegation, um, job descriptions, and communication commitment. So we want to really look at some of these things on um, connecting with your club, with district and ZI, just to even see each other's faces here. Who are our leaders? Who are each other so that we can reach out and have a chance to um, meet and talk and share and get a chance to share our resources and our ideas and our frustrations and our um, <laughs> solutions as we go along. Um, so we're going to do some tool, give you some tools on how to lead your club in goal setting. We're going to break out into some smaller groups, which I think give all of us a chance to get to know each other better and to share some resources a little um, bit into the meeting. And we're going to wrap up with our goals and um, pledge what's going forward, what we were each going to do. So you can do the next um, next slide, Sandy. And some of the things that we're really wanting to um, cover today, looking at what are effective leadership reminders. It's you, okay? You're integral to Zonta. We can't do anything without you. You are the contact to all of the members in your club, to all of the people on your committee. We need to have you working with us to share what the mission is with the members and to connect with us and to connect to serve on the members um, and empowering the members to engage and inspire them um, with leadership. One of the things that we've really found after COVID is that we've all missed a lot of connection and we've gotten used to kind of mm, working on our own, doing our, you know, but really need to make a connection. And that's kind of what we're prioritizing in this meeting today. Um, next slide, please. So District 1, one of the things that we're looking at, we did a lot this year, and you guys are familiar with the successes and the different things that went on in the first year. One of the things that we heard and are thinking about wanting to do a little differently is looking at how the district committees can connect with the club committees. And so we have in the district some, and you guys are here, some really strong district um, chair people who have been working, whether it's with advocacy, whether it's with scholarships, whether it's the nominating, fundraising, membership, service chairs, communication and PR chairs, and are have been going to some of the ZI meetings and finding great information. And 
one of the struggles that we're hearing is that make, getting this information back to the clubs has been a bit of a challenge. And so what we're looking at doing, and we had asked um, for some homework before, but we'll ask it at the end for those that couldn't get it done, to make sure we have the contacts of who is your advocacy chair, who is your membership chair, et cetera, so that our, commit, our um, folks that are in our um committees who are chairing these can get that information back to those folks and CC the presidents. Because what we're finding is the presidents have been a little overwhelmed with all the information they're getting. We want to make sure that we keep them informed with a CC so that they're not missing out, but it doesn't have to go through the president for everything. So we're hoping that that's going to help with some of the communication. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that as we go on, but that's another one of the goals. So our commitment to make your job easier, um, we will continue to host district training and collaboration subjects based on what your clubs and chairs need. So we're gonna be asking what do you need and what would be the best way to do that? But our commitment is to make sure we do that. And as I said a little earlier, we're gonna ensure that all presidents are in the loop, you know, that we're going to um, CC them on any um, committee communication. And we will keep the district emails brief, manageable and shareable. And that's one of our challenges because there's a lot of information to share, but it becomes overwhelming to the point where people might not be reading the emails or I'll get to it, you know, oh, you know, I can't focus right now, I'll get to it. So we're really working at trying to get it um very brief, as you've seen some of our July shorts, our August shorts, quick, you know, little emails that let you know what's going on. And we really are looking at um, listening to what your needs are. And as we go through, we're going to have you put, giving us feedback and putting it into our um, um, our chat and surveys at the end. So I think that's my, my three plus minutes that went over. So quickly, sorry, Janice. Be proud of the work you've done and you're doing for Zonta uh, as a leader to build a better world for women and girls. Go ahead. Hey everybody, I'm Sandy Carroll. I am um, area two, actually not area one, district one, area two director. And I was asked to talk to you about everybody here in this room is superwoman, but we also are superwomen with delegation powers. And one of the things that we've seen happen this past year and, and through COVID is the presidents have taken on an enormous load. And so what we thought we'd do is just really briefly kind of hit on some things that'll help you uh, remember kind of what delegation is all about and why it's so important. And some of the common questions that we've had is, in most clubs, do presidents have to serve on every committee? The answer is no, absolutely not. That's why you have committee chairs. Um, it's You want to make sure that your presidency is inspiring others, but that you're not stretching yourself too thin. Um, do you have to be on every district Zoom? The answer again is no. You want to send those trusted people. If it's a you know, a, a treasurer meeting or a finance meeting, send your treasurer, make sure that they're going, but, um, you know, you don't have to take on that load entirely yourself. Um, and we've heard about just, you know, clubs having just a small handful of women that are doing it all. And so we're all trying to transition out of COVID. I think our club membership's changing. Uh, we have some that are, you know, uh, we're, we're losing some Zanchins who have built the clubs into what they are as active volunteers. We're getting new people who don't really, you know, have much experience. And so trying to balance those is, I think, your biggest job moving forward. And we just want to provide some tips and resources for that to kind of make it easier. I will tell you, president delegation is not natural for everybody. We're all strong doers. And sometimes how many people have said, it's just easier to do it myself. I mean, I think that everybody, yeah, nice show of hands because it's absolutely true. I believe it too. Chris Haley, who is our current president in Berkshire will say it about me and I will say it about her. Um, but really, um, these are just some really quick tips to make delegating easier. Um, we're big on strategic planning this year and uh, Mary's gonna talk a little little bit later about that, but if you can work with your clubs 
as soon as possible, getting started in um, in September with a strategy and goals for the year, it's hugely important in helping spread kind of the job responsibilities and make sure everybody's aligned on the same page. Um, sometimes we just don't all have the same ideas about what we should be doing and working on. So it's really good. Determine who that's going to be. Is it your board of directors? Is it all your club uh, chairs? Who is Who should be in that room to do that planning session? Um, and I will tell you, I'm more than happy to come and help, whether it's on Zoom or to come in person. I do a lot of strategic planning for my company and others, but um, it really pays off in the long run because then your board and your committee chairs can actually have some ownership. Like you've decided to together, these are our goals and it's not going to be, you know, oh, the president's got to um, somehow figure out how to fulfill that. You know, at that point, at that planning meeting, while you're setting this up, you're saying, do we have the capacity? Do we have the volunteers? Do, who's going to do what? How are we going to get this done by the end of the year so that you're not taking everything on your shoulders? Um, we have brilliant resources. Mary Knight has the website, but we're willing to send you and we can send it out again. Uh, the club manual, it has job descriptions. A lot of times we don't even realize that club uh, clubs have job descriptions, but it's really helpful to make sure everybody understands what their responsibilities are when they kind of take that role on and then agree how you're going to communicate, how and when. The reporting back of club chairs, are you busy? Are you working? Are they CCing you are on you? And are they giving an opportunity to like um, present to your, your club itself and get some buy-in by your actual members? So just really empowering um, the president it, to, 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 to delegate. It's the most important thing that you can do. One of the things we'll say is it's not about doing everything yourself. It's really about giving people the ability to do it and show them opportunities to grow. And I think that they'll step up to the plate, but you actually have to lead them to it and make them commit. Um, some helpful hints, I'll just blow through very quickly. Um, and these are from Learned the Hard Way. Uh, in years past, it's uh, um, information that district has received. If a leader engagement changes, a club president is ill, has a family change, something like that, find somebody else to step in right away. A lot of times the president said, oh, I'll just do that. Oh, I'll just do the newsletter for a little while. I'll just do the, the meeting planning for a little while. Oh, I'll just do advocacy until they get back up to speed. If you can have somebody in your club step into that role, because it's really um, it really becomes overwhelming when all those little tasks fall directly on your shoulders. And when possible, have mentors or backups in all of your groups. All of those people who kind of do all the work should be really great great leaders in those groups and encourage other people to get involved and make sure that they're making your life a little bit easier. Um, remember that the strongest clubs have heavy collaboration. We have um, have heard not just um, in our district, but um, across the nation. Sometimes you hear, oh, that president doesn't let anybody do anything. You know, they, they do it all and, you know, they handle everything. Nobody can really even can do everything. So make sure that you are getting that engagement. Um, yeah, and stay on top of things. Leave room for people to lead, but honestly, your job is also to make sure that they're doing their job. That's where you're going to spend your time. Um, and then share opportunities for members to get involved in training, because I think district training and their direct communication with district can be really helpful to you in kind of releasing some of the burden from you. If some of the treasures can come here, if some of the advocacy can get their information from district and not always from you, that's kind of helpful. And the last thing is try to make it as fun as possible. I know we have a lot to do. We have huge lofty goals, but really the more fun you can make it, the more buy-in you'll get, the more volunteers you'll get. So with that, um, I am here for you. Whatever you need, Sandy Carroll, feel free to email me anytime. Happy to help. Thank you, Sandy. Hi, everybody. <clears throat> this is Mary Knight, um, and I'm here to talk about um, starting with the end. Creating a club goals for the year is an important first step in getting where you want to go. And a fun exercise is to begin with the end in mind. How will, how and what will you be celebrating at the end of the Zanti year? Uh, my club, the Quaybog Club, um, had a meeting of the board uh, this year, or the, in August. And we came up with some aspirations. Next, next slide, please. Um, these four items, um, specific things are, were 
suggested by Zonta International Board through its strategic plan and our district board. Um, this is what we want to focus on this year, being credible and visible, making the club stronger by making membership meaningful and fun, being sustainable, using volunteer time and money wisely, and engaging members, supporters, and like-minded organizations. Because we do, when we have a lot of people working together, it makes things easier. Um, so my club board has some aspirations that we wanted to share with you. They haven't been approved by our club yet club members, but I thought this would be um, be interesting. Um, I have the wrong slide there. Um, but I can tell you what my club came up with. <laughs> okay, so with the credibility and visibility, um, in June, we said we want to increase visibility. Uh, we did increase in visibility in our community and member interest by having some awesome speakers at six of our meetings. We publicized them in local media, social media, and personal invitation. We held special events in November and in March where we honored uh, deserving women in our community. And we had advocacy actions on Zanta Says No and Zanta Says No, um, which is our climate activism. So that's how we were credible and visible. Um, we made the club stronger this year by valuing each, valuing each other's strengths. And um, we started delegating so that every member has a role to play. We were willing to try things that we haven't done before. We added a fun element to every single meeting and all members contributed to fun, a foundation for women, $25. And we also, at least $25. And we put one third of our profits from fundraisers into the Zonta Foundation for Women. To be sustainable, we started to grow leaders through mentoring, workshops, and online courses that Zonta International and District One have available. We welcomed four new members and all members were committed to being ambassadors to Zonta in whatever capacity they can, can do that. And finally, in engaging members, we invited community members to help with hands-on projects and fundraising activities. Not only did we raise awareness, but we also gained supporters. We had a YWPA winner and we made inroads um, in promoting Zonta women in STEM and women in business by finding internet sites that, um, that show sco various scholarships available where people can go and check. And also through um, making personal contacts at con with college financial aid people in different colleges. Um, and finally, we had, um, we increased our servants grant requests by 50% by actively seeking out like-minded organizations and listening to their needs. Next slide, please. So when you look at your own club and the accomplishments, one of the things you really need to do is get real. <laughs> Goals need to be specific, measurable, achievable, and realistic. Um, secondly, it needs to work for your club. Next slide, please. So when you sit down with your board and your club, what accomplishments do you want to celebrate? Um, what works for your club? You don't want to, um, you want it to be achievable. You want it to be a stretch, but not unrealistic. Get some ideas on things that you want to accomplish and get them on paper. Every goal needs a leader, a cheerleader. And so that's really key. It could be an existing committee chair. It could be um, another individual who has good experience in that particular area uh, that doesn't have um, a particular job right now, but make sure that that role is filled. Every goal also has steps. Things don't happen overnight. There's some things that have to be put in place in order to accomplish that goal. And every goal probably needs resources. You know, someone to mentor, someone to train, um, some tools that, that are needed. Um, the district board is committed to making sure you get all the resources you can. can. Um, if we can't find it within our district, we will go outside our district to make sure that we find something for you. Um, 
So I think that's that's it for that slide. Next slide, please. Okay, this is where I'm going to be getting that master calendar, if you wouldn't mind, please. Um, once you have the big picture, you can start filling out the calendar. We have a master calendar to identify when and how things will play out during the year. Um, this is where we put in speakers, events, major milestones for big projects. Um, and all members should have a copy of this. We put um, some inf some calendar dates from Zantra National and the district. So to get you started for the key things that are happening. And um, it's something that's very easy to fill out and shareable with your club. Um, a little bit farther down on the page, you'll see that we have contact information for our area directors. And if you need any support, these are the people that you should contact. Um, they work with, they. we meet as a board every month, but we also communicate um, in between those marks. So they're always, uh, we're always listening and we also wanna make sure that we're responsive as possible. Also here, you'll notice that there's a link to the Zonta manual. That's where we have all our job descriptions and all the things that have to get done um, in a club meeting. You have a lot of flexibility as to what you do as a club, but there's certain things that we really need to make sure and, and include in our, in, our, um, in our activities. There's also something called a Zonta leadership program. Um, I was at the, uh, the North American Interdistrict meeting in um, June of this past year and uh, learned about a new tool for helping members get a better handle on leadership and different aspects of the club. How often do we put people in leadership positions and expect them to know what to do instinctively? Um, there is help available, um, whether it's just somebody starting in on the club, a good orientation, um, serving on a committee chair, stepping up to other leadership positions and district leadership positions. It's called the Core Competencies Reimagined, and it's intended to help individuals to um, be more confident, efficient, empowered, and prepared to take on leadership roles in the club and in life. It's really good stuff. A little bit farther down in this, this document, we have a who's who in, um, in our district so that you have some names to refer to. And then a little bit later, we have um, a link to the strategic plan that Zant International has, um, has just introduced and that we'll be hearing a lot more about and a worksheet that you can use for your um, planning your goals. Um, we have um, other, some basic other information that was um, part of the last just of the international convention um, just to, so that you have it in front of you. And um, I think that's good. So my message to you is um, if you need training, if there's any of your club committee chairs need training, if you need um, some support, whether it's training or mentorship, we're here for you. So let's go back to our slides. And we're here. If you need to outsource, training is available and your outsourcing is available. So let us know what you need. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. Julie, we'll be sending out the calendar and all other information at the end of um, this session. Good question. Before we go into breakouts, if I could say one thing about that calendar, the best thing you can do as a president is to share that with all your chairs. Share, share, share that calendar. It helps for social media. It helps for the person writing your newsletter. It helps for the person trying to plan meeting speakers. It helps for the people, you know, doing meeting planning. It's it's an incredible resource Mary put together. Okay, and uh, Donna Raycraft, you're... You're our next coordinator of our breakout sessions, but you're muted. Okay, I'm ready. <laughs> 
So the next thing that we're doing is going to break out into um, two groups of the presidents and one group of the committee chairs so that we can share amongst us some of the um, different things that we have. And I believe we have 12 minutes for that. So that's what we're looking at. Mary and Sandy, I know you're yep. doing the magic. Uh, just, a, just a couple of things. Leadership is not about having all the answers. Um, it's about asking questions and being willing to learn and grow. The beauty of Zonta is the, there's a wealth of knowledge and experience we bring collectively to the floor. So we were asked to, um, you were asked to think about a challenge. And um, so we're going to give you 12 minutes or so to um, talk about some of the challenges you're facing and get feedback from each other on how you can um, can do better this year in, in one thing. That's all you need. Just one thing that you can um, put into place. So we've got people breaking you into um, different meetings, excuse me, different rooms. And um, we'll let you know when you when our 12 minutes is up. And if there's any questions before we get started. Recording in progress. Okay, we're gonna put you in rooms. <laughs> Hello, how you doing? I'm in two different places. So I'm on the That's phone. I'm on the phone and I'm on I'm on the computer. I'm trying yeah, to I noticed you were out. coming in a second time. Because <laughs> I was my phone is dying. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> so I don't know what so I'm gonna log out on the phone. Sure. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah, but I'm here hearing me in two places. Because I'm going to log out of one. I'm on the computer. That's the problem. I'm on the computer and I'm on the phone. The computer was charging and the phone is dying. So now I'm moving. So I don't. So I've got Mary here and Janice there. So I don't know where I'm supposed to be. I'm trying to find people, and um, I don't know if everybody's. Let's see who's supposed to be in our room. I'll go, with Janice. I'll hold on. I'll, I'll just put you on mute. Oh, have you joined a room now? That you're... Oh, there's Mary. Okay, she can take over. There you go, Mary. No, 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 no. I'm just, I'm just going from room to room. <laughs> oh, okay. So we're we're coming up. We need to have some ideas as to what kind of challenges that you're facing in your clubs. Can anybody come out with something specific? Or in your committee, or in your duties? Yeah, I think um, for our club, um, we've we've really had. Um, we we have a lot of our members who are are not well, and um, that's a real challenge for us this year. Is how to how to help each other out, how to support each other. I think that's probably our number one challenge mm -hmm. that we're facing. Do you have some ideas as how you might be able to to help them or? Well, I mean, I think keep them engaged. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that the the biggest thing is um, you know trying to keep in keep in touch, not just at the meetings, but. Um, you know, follow up with, um, is there anything we can do? And, and Mary is great at, at keeping us in the loop of, of what's happening with people. And that's, uh, you know, it's, it's, um, and then trying to figure out, okay, if, if somebody can't be at a meeting, you know, how can we fill in for them or how, how can we support them and keep the, the club moving forward? Mm -hmm. Does anybody have any ideas as how they could maybe do that within their club, the rest of the group here Popping out so, off the top so to continue with what she was saying like, like we don't have people that are are too are too ill to attend a meeting they can all attend the meeting but they can't help with special events or with other activities 
and that gets to be a problem as well. And and the only solution to that is is like uh, bringing in younger members, but that's that's like the whole membership cart before the horse thing, right? It, it's trying to get new members that like some of these senior members are coming up with ideas like oh, invite this person invite that person but they're just as senior as they are mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. and so we need younger members to help bring in mm -hmm. other younger members mm -hmm. I, guess, mm -hmm. I guess that's where I was heading with that mm -hmm. I think we all need that <laughs> right I have fresh blood fresh ideas etc right right how about you Donna I, well, I mean, that's been our main problem for years, um, older members and trying to recruit newer ones when, um, you know, we don't have a lot to going on to attract them. Uh, that's really just been our main, main challenge. No, like specific projects that would attract them. Is that what you mean by that? Well, we yeah. haven't been doing really any specific projects yeah. since before COVID. So, yeah. 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 So. Yeah. Lynn, I don't know if she's hearing us or not. I don't know if she's. I am, and now I'm now I'm parked, so I can I can. Can you hear me all right? Yep, we can. <laughs> Great. Um, I think. I think when we talk about younger members, we we need to be thinking about like forties and fifties, right? And. I can only speak for myself, but I don't think I'm alone in this. It was when my kids were exiting high school and I had been on music boosters and I had been on PTO and all of these things like, okay, now what? I think those women who have been involved at, with their kids stuff, We hear from everybody. We want to make sure that we can hear from everybody. So who would like to go next? What is you your greatest challenge of being a leader? Whatever your position is. Julie, how about you? Only because you're next in my screen. Sure. I'm Julie Kaufman. I'm the VP of um, the Medford Club. And our greatest challenge is we just don't have enough people to do everything. So Regina and I are basically doing most of the stuff we have a very good secretary who you know takes all the great notes and, and our treasurer does what she has to do um but we can't even get enough people to come to a meeting sometimes mm -hmm. so we don't know where to go and how to, to do all the things we would love to be able to do when there aren't enough people to do it and i'll just add to uh, Julie, how do you want more people in your club or do you want more people in your club to be engaged? More people in the club. More because, people in the club. You know, when you when you include our officers and Donna, that's five out of the seven people that come all the time. There's not that's right. there's not a lot of choice for somebody else to take something else on because there isn't anybody else. Right. You know, so so perhaps new people would help. We need more. We need more people, and all of us have pretty much tapped out the people that we know. Mm -hmm. So that's that's some of the that's some um, part of what we talk about in our monthly meet, membership meetings, and um, I think we I think ZI has given us some new ideas that I think that are going to be helpful in that regard. Good. Regina, you're next on my screen. So could you go? Well, next? I'm I'm in the same club with Julie. Julie Z. VP yeah, and I'm the okay. president. And so I could reiterate. But what instead she just of said. just the whole club of what your whole club needs, Pardon? what is your per instead of just what your club needs, could you talk about what you personally need as a leader? What is your greatest challenge in your position? Well, I don't know. I, I mean I've I've been a leader in a lot of organizations. And I think mm -hmm. uh being a leader.
Hi, everyone. It's been a while. Hey, Nadine. Hey, Beatrice. Hi. And Jane, you're in Portugal permanently now, huh? I am. And so good to see you, though. Good to see you, too. Um, so I am Liz Hart, and I am the UN chair. And it's been, I guess the challenge has been, it's been very quiet lately in terms of clubs' interest in the UN. It's always been a challenge to sort of make that international um, connection between the local clubs and our, um, our, you know, affiliation with the United Nations. And um, I think the last time I was asked to do a presentation about what is the UN and how do we fit in was a couple of years ago. So, um, you know, I know that people have a lot to do and probably the UN is the last thing that they think about, um, but, um, you know, I'm ready and willing to give a presentation if anybody wants it, so. Well, Liz, I think you and I share that love and passion and um, <laughs> haven't taken the course from the UNITAR on um, global diplomacy this past year. I ended up getting some people who are taking the course to join Zonta and oh, the end of our um, e-club. So, you know, I think there it's a matter of reaching out and, and having relationships and meeting people mm -hmm. who are. And um, so thank you. <laughs> thank you for that insight. Nadine, everybody's excited to hear, hear your report. Uh, so am I still muted? No, no, no. Okay, all right. Um, it's it's great to see Liz and Beatrice and Donna <laughs> and um, every and Jane too. That's that's been a long time since I've seen you. Um, so I think that I my job of recruiting people was not that difficult for getting a new club started because um, it, if you don't know what the circumstances are, I moved to a retirement 55 plus community in Rhode Island near the ocean and there aren't any clubs in Rhode Island and I really wanted to be still in district one. So this was an opportunity for me to get something going here. And it's a, you know, it's going to be um, a, a pretty large community 300 homes when it's all built it's not all built so there's potential for a lot more members we have a beautiful community center on the property that we can walk to and that's where mary knight joined us one night and met everybody so i think these things are big pluses that I, it's easy to meet people because we're all brand new we're all looking for something meaningful to do and stuff like that but my my so now i'm at like that was it. I got the 15 people plus myself. But now the second step is what I think my biggest challenge is for the club. And for me is that I'm the only person in the club that knows anything about Zonta. And so I don't have any older time, you know, um, club members that can help me with new people. They're all new people, you know. And so I'm finding that like right now I'm trying to put together my first um, board with officers and stuff and people don't really want to do it. And I don't think that um, I blame them. They don't know anything about Zonta and they don't know, um, you know, I think how much is involved. And most of the people are people like myself who had big jobs and a lot of responsibility and stuff. And you maybe you think they're thinking too big. I think that this is going to be a small, you know, small group of people that we can probably you know, handle easily. It's not like working at a big company or, you know, stuff like that. So my, that's my current challenge right now is what do I do when I'm the only person in the club that knows anything at all about Zon?
Jean, it's so good to see you. Beck, am I the only one back? What happened? <laughs> We're coming back into the main room. Oh, I must have. I don't know how I got back here. <laughs> uh, everybody, everybody's coming back. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That always goes by so fast. I, I feel like apologizing for the person that just got cut off, and I'm sure it happened in every group. But um, thanks for sharing, and I'm sure Donna's going to bring us through some more discussion on this. Hold on a second. Not done yet. Come on. This is where we are. Okay. All right. So who wants to start? <laughs> so we're reporting for, on something from our group. Is that what you want us to do right now? Yep. Uh, Janice, it's, Janice, it sounds like you... Do you want to go first? I don't mind starting. Okay. Please, any of the members in our group, um, please add anything to this. Um, one of the major, major issues in, in all of them was um, members um, are not well in their group. They're older and um, they're having, you know, there's a challenge to keep them in touch and to, um, they can't always help on the special activities. So, they want to be able to find younger members, newer and younger members. Um, it was it's real challenging, and and some of them have a process to be able to um, keep those older and not well uh, members informed in what's going on, and just keeping in touch. It's really important for them to keep in touch. So that was a that was the main real one, real concern, and working. I'm sorry, and then. I got little notes in shorthand here, sorry. Um, some of the members have full-time jobs and it's hard to keep up with everything. Um, sometimes there's a lot of emails that come in from district and international and et cetera, and they have to wait and look at them on the weekend. And sometimes they miss some, some things and they do like the shorts, um, that helps. So unless anybody else has anything to share from my group, is it okay? I can sort of uh, dovetail on that. We had uh, some very similar discussions. Um, and I think uh, um, what it all boils down to, and I recognize that I'm looking at through the eyes of my role as membership chair for district, but it all boils down to not having enough people to do all of the jobs and that um, some people are worn out. And we are bound to have people who are, as Janice just said, who are older and are gonna be stepping back. So just because we have 15 members don't doesn't mean that we have 15 active people. So it might be that there are only six people who are actively uh, working. So the challenge is to how to get them to be, um, to step up and to feel confident enough um, and that, that again, um, goes back to new members, building leadership and giving them um, something meaningful to do um, and not just um, going along with everybody else. One of the people on my club's nominating committee um, shared with me something that I think is um, very useful. She says in AA meetings, they always give the new person the job of starting the coffee at the next meeting. That just ensures that they'll come back, that they have a job to do, and that they're valued. That's good. And the, gr the group that I was with was um, intended to be committee chairs, and we had some folks that um, weren't, but it, it was an interesting sharing. And I think um, one of the things that... Um, People who are doing the committees 
was really asking for making sure to connect with who are the people in the clubs that they should be communicating with, um, that um, some of the things that were surprising was as Nadine was sharing what it's like to do a new club with people who she's the only one that has experience with Zonta and that there are many new members, which is great, but they know nothing about Zonta. So how do you do uh, mentoring? How do you share that? How do you get people to step forward to be um, take an office role? And so we talked a little bit about that's one of the roles of the supporting clubs can help. We've got experience a lot of experience within our clubs and to look at a new club forming is kind of an opportunity to utilize some of our expertise from our other club members and really kind of looking at that. And another surprise um, I think was from um, the UN and that people were not asking for information on the United Nations and that that would be something Liz Hart was thinking it was very quiet. And yet it's something that we're seeing more involvement from um, people with the e-club. And so just kind of looking at how we might want to make these connections to ZI, to what is the UN, what is our role, and kind of doing more education along that line with our members. Mm -hmm. Is there anything I missed out of our, I mean, there was a lot, but feel free to add in my group. <coughs> Okay. So I think the question we have here on, is there anything you learned that you're going to implement? I'm not sure if that was um, the discussion, but is there anything that you learned from your group that uh, was either reassuring or made you think? Karen, do you want to share anything from our discussion? Or Lisa? It's okay. It was good to be able to be in a small group and talk and see folks. I think that's always one of the things that is great about breakout rooms because you do have a chance to talk more. It's not quite in person and we definitely want to get to that piece, but um, for today, that's good. What's our next slide? And if you haven't felt like you've been heard, um, we do want to make sure that we continue the conversation. So um, with the board or with, you know, other clubs, um, you know, folks that you've met here, um, you know, let's keep that conversation going. And I wonder if I could just do quick, two quick polls. Thank you. The first one is on, whoops, fail to launch polling. <laughs> okay. You want to tell you what I can launch it. I think delegation or overview. Okay, so yeah, I was going to do the delegation first. Um, one question that um, I had is how many people are interested, or are you interested in getting additional information, um, mentorship, um, training on delegation? Because it does not come naturally, and it, sometimes it's as has been said, it's just easier to do it yourself. But you're not doing you you're club members any service um, by doing it yourself. So we want to make sure that we get people involved. So let us know if you want, if you're interested in that, and um, we will get something together for you. Right. 10 out of 10. Okay. Thank you. So you it looks like there is. Yep. Yes. Thank you. How do you share results? I'm not able to do it myself. I'm sorry. Are you seeing it? I shared it. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. okay. Yep. So there are some people that's interest that are interested. Perfect. Um, the next poll is um, if you're interested in training for um, kind of getting a good overview of the Zonta International website and our district website. Um, a lot of things have changed. And, you know, if you haven't been up there a while, it's a kind of overwhelming. So I've gotten really good at going through it and finding the things that I need. And I want to share that with you. So I'm wondering if any of these times might be worth workable, workable for you. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So let me know if um, those any of those work. 
What do you mean by PM and AM? AM would be like in the morning um, or up to lunch, or PM would be after six, after five or six at night. Okay. Can't do Monday, can't do Wednesday, can't do Sunday. <laughs> I teach four nights a week, so. Okay, so what, <laughs> what days would be good? As long as it's not early in the morning, there's only one choice for me, so. Are there days that would be better, Julie? Julie, put it in the chat and we'll... Um, well, I, I put Friday a.m., which seems to work for, for others, but... Um, Put your thoughts in the chat. We're going to save the chat and go through it and um, try to, if necessary, we'll have two or three different sessions. So not a problem. And uh, we can also record it. So yeah, well, that might be helpful as well. Thank you very sure. much. That gives them some good feedback. Thank you. Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed seeing the faces of the other leaders of the district and being part of our quick um, one hour. It was important that we build relationships with each other and it helps us deal with the challenges and, and share some great ideas. Um, and I'm looking forward to meeting with you in person. Um, this was far too short, but we said that we would keep it that way. Um, so, cause everybody has a very busy um, schedule and this, of course, is our next opportunity to meet in person, which is the fall conference at the end of October in Halifax. So we're really looking forward to some great speakers and what an interesting place Halifax is. And of course, as you know, Halifax has had some challenges this year. And um, we are happy to know that the um, storms are are now dry and everything is looking good and our Halifax club has been working hard with our accommodations and different activities so we're really looking forward to it um, and one of the questions that I saw is that yes we will be sending all the information you had today because it is um, a lot that we gave out and there'll be the handouts and the links I'll be coming in an immediate email that you're going to get there's also a survey that we'll have a link to that was um, some, you know, some people were able to get it to us in advance, but those that haven't, we still want so that we know who are your um, key people in these committee roles so that we can give them to our um, various committee chairs to make it their jobs easier for them and your job easier because the information can go to them instead of to you when you'll get a CC. So any questions before we wrap up in our last two minutes? Any um, thoughts? What, did this work for you? Uh, feel free to put anything in chat also. I want to really thank Mary and um, Sandy for doing the heavy lifting on this. I learned how to delegate. Um, <laughs> by having other folks be able to take a lead. And I tell you, sometimes you've got to mentor just um, getting other folks. You don't have to do it all. And I really appreciate their talents. So thank you and everybody who was able to take some time and share with us tonight. So be proud of the work you've done and the work you'll continue to do to make the world a better place for women and girls. And we, as our district board here, is very committed to support you. And we'll do the next training based on those polls to look at the international website. And in the chat, share what worked in the meeting and additional support you would like to see. So thank you, thank you, thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. And yeah, thank this, you. no this matter is... what anybody says, you're all superheroes to me. <laughs> That's so sweet. <laughs> okay, good night. Bye. Bye. Good night. Good night. Yeah. Good night. Bye. 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 Thank you for your time. Thank, thank you. Hi, Carol. I just saw, saw you. You were on the bottom. How are you feeling? Great. Good. I my apologies. I had it in my head. It was tomorrow night, and I fell asleep. 
<laughs> because you probably we're... needed that sleep, Carol. That's why we're giving yeah. you a little break, okay? Uh, now, it's also recorded. So tomorrow, when you thought it was scheduled for, you can watch the whole, whole thing. 